Hello Jet Ski fans and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to be doing some more work on the VH Jet Ski manifolds that I'm working on for the Jet Ski Brothers. And this video is either going to be detailed and very long or a lot of time lapse because I got a huge amount of footage for this and I made a huge amount of progress. These things are almost complete. We just got a few things that we need to take care of before we can ship them off to Josh. So let's get right into this video. I spent a bunch of time welding this manifold together off camera. I took a few photos of it, but uh, basically I just wanted to focus on getting it done. And now that I've figured out exactly what I need to do to make this work, I will now run you guys through the next one. So the first thing that I did was use the inner, the actual exhaust chamber plate to mark out exactly on the water box plate where it's going to sit. So I marked exactly where that is going to sit in relation to that one. Figuring out how to make stuff work even with the fact that you're getting distortion is just kind of part of the job. So I had these lined up perfectly and they're slightly out of line, but I can still get that on there. So that's good news. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit this down on a flat plate and push that down until they're all perfectly even. I'm going to take this plate and I'm going to line it up perfectly with the scribe lines that I've put on there. Let's get it lined up over here. Now that I have these pieces locked together, I can use this piece of pipe to mark exactly where the inside of the pipe is on this plate. Now I can do this. I've now separated these pieces and cleaned them off, so I'm going to install them back on the runners and then tack them in place. Line this up. Now that I have these clamped in place, I can't just weld it together because I'm going to be welding it from the outside and the water jacket is in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack them on the inside in a couple of places. Once they're tacked on the inside, then I will slide the water jacket down. Then I'll be able to get at it from this side. I'll weld around it, slide the water jacket back, and then we'll continue on building the rest of it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull this stuff apart because I put a lot of heat into these areas. So I'm kind of a little bit nervous what's going to happen next. All right, it actually took a fair bit of convincing to get this top water jacket plate to go back to where it's supposed to go. But I got all of the welds or the fusion welds done inside of here. Now the fusion welds are kind of just being used as tack welds and also uh, to kind of smoothen the transition between the uh, plate and the primary pipe. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to weld out all around the bottom of the primary runners. All right, last one. 
last one. We got it done. The welder acted up a little bit there at the end, but it might just be because the tungsten was really crappy. All right, I'm gonna cool this off. So now there's just one tricky bit left, and that is getting this plate back down around the welds. So because the aluminum is bound to have changed shape, I am almost positive that this isn't just going to slide down easily. It is moving a little bit. I'm gonna get my hearing protection because this is hard on the ears. The camera ended up seizing after a minute of recording, so I don't know what I actually captured there. But I did manage to beat this thing into place. So now I have both of the manifolds finished to the same point. And the next thing I need to do is start welding the actual log manifold together. I do have something in mind for the inlets, outlets, and to keep these pipes a little bit cooler. But I'm gonna wait until the rest of the exhaust is finished to go back and do that, or to go back and see if it's uh, feasible. All right, I spend the last day and a half welding this thing together and I did have to take a break to go to the clinic because something's going on with my ankle. I have an ultrasound and x-rays scheduled for tomorrow. It has something to do with an old biking injury. I'm hoping that it's nothing serious. I am going to film putting the second one together. I wanted to make sure that I actually had the steps figured out before I turn on the camera because yeah, it's hard enough to do without recording everything. I still need to cap off the ends. I actually left these open till last so that we can see right through and see where the water is going to flow through the water jackets. I can't remember exactly where I left off, but I sure hope it has something to do with welding the exhaust the log together because that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to tack the front and rear panels of the exhaust log on and then I'm going to cap the ends off and put these on the top and bottom. And then the next step is welding the jacket in place. I don't know if you guys can tell from there, but there is a little bit of a gap here. This did warp a little bit because it was so thin around these areas, but uh, it'll be a very easy gap to close with the weld bead, so I'm not concerned about it at all. All right, my camera seized up, so I don't know what I did or didn't catch, but uh, yeah, I've got these plates tacked in place. I'm gonna tack both sides in place and then probably the bottom on both sides. That one went on easy. I know you guys can't see anything, but I'm gonna tack this end cap in place. It should help hold things fairly square. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Didn't expect it to go that well. <laughs> okay, I guess now I'm gonna start welding stuff out. This will probably end up being a time lapse with some generic non-copyrighted music over the top of it. So enjoy that.
just had some some tax pop a bird over here. <laughs> I got that done. I'm pretty happy with the bead. Uh, my hand got ridiculously hot even with the, uh, what do you call this? Tig finger? All right. I went in the house, said hi to Quasar, said hi to Megan, had a little bit of a snack, and now I'm back out. One of the problems with having kind of consumer grade equipment is that uh, it definitely slows things down. I really wish that I had a water cooled torch for doing this and also a beefier welder. I don't think that looks too bad for a beginner welder. But uh, I definitely was having some issues with the welder. It's working better than it has been in the past, but I still wouldn't recommend buying an Everlast welder. Done. After another long break, I'm ready to do some more welding. I've got both ends welded up. So now I'm going to tackle a couple of straight runs along here. Should be fairly straightforward, but with this welder, you never know what it's gonna do. Might work, might not. Let's hope. I'm not going to push my luck any further than that. I'm going to let everything cool off. Take a little break again. I suppose I should show you guys these welds since they're going to be hidden inside. They'll probably be the ones that turn out best because nobody will ever see them and then the ones that go on the outside will be crap. <laughs> Just in case I haven't complained about it enough or made it clear, the reason why this takes so long to weld, the reason why it takes so many hours to weld this up is because I basically have to stop after four minutes of welding and wait 10 or 15 minutes for the welder to cool down. When I was doing the really heavy welds, the cord and the torch were actually getting so hot that I couldn't handle them. You can see it's actually really hazy here where it started and then it cleared up. And then I think around here it started acting kind of poorly. And then here I dabbed by mistake, but uh, <laughs> Just in case we're not clear, this is going to be a piece that sits over here. This is the exhaust chamber where the exhaust gases go and the water jacket is on the outside of that. So in order to pierce through the water jacket, I'm going to weld a pipe on here.
I've got this piece of quarter inch plate in here and some card stock to shim it up to the right height so I don't need to hold it in place. And then I'll use this piece of metal to square it up with the edge. And then... I have this all tacked up except for the end caps and these little pieces here. I'm gonna make those after this is all welded up. All right, folks, I've given everything a little bit of time to cool off and while the camera was shut off and this was cooling, I made these little in end caps and so now I'm gonna tack them in place and I'll probably weld them out and then build some little triangle pieces to go in here. As you guys can see, the water jacket is completely welded up now and it is looking pretty. I just finished welding up around the exhaust outlet and it's all sealed up. I also made this template to show you guys where the exhaust is going to run once it comes out of the outlet. Basically there's going to be a 90 degree elbow here and it's going to exit between, I believe, the starter motor is here and the hull. So there's very little room for that to go. So this is an undetermined length as of now and I've cut a bevel on the end of here so that these things will weld together fairly easily. Uh, the water inlets to cool the exhaust are going to be here and here. And the reason why there's going to be two, uh, basically two reasons. One for even flow so that the front and the back get uh, even cooling. And then the other reason is that there's actually two low points in this exhaust and when the engine is shut off we want it to drain all the water out of the exhaust and not having any sitting in there corroding away at it. The water outlets bring us on to a completely different subject because the water outlets are actually going to be placed in some cooling jackets that I'm going to make up here. A few of you were concerned about how hot the primary runners were going to get and for good reason they see a lot of heat they're directly in the flame front of the exhaust so uh, yeah they have the potential to become extremely hot. I knew this and I took uh, kind of measures to try to get rid of a lot of that heat. One I used a very thick exhaust flange that's why I used aluminum and I used half inch thick exhaust flange. To act as a heat sink, it's also connected to the head, which will draw a lot of heat away from the exhaust into the head. And also the water box will be kept cooled, so that will draw a lot of heat out of the primary runners into the exhaust chamber itself. But to make sure that we don't have any problems, I'm going to add water jackets here, here, and here. And I'm gonna go about this in a fairly straightforward way. I'm gonna get some more of this bar stock and I'm gonna go all the way across here on both the front, I guess the left and the right. So there's gonna be a piece of this on the front of here and behind, and then they're gonna get capped off on the top. That's going to leave just enough room to get the spark plugs in and out. And then the cooling fittings are gonna to have to be placed so that they don't interfere with either the spark plug or the spark plug wires. This whole project is very tight. I know it probably doesn't show up on camera, but Josh might actually have to grind away at some of this and weld it or grind away at some of the hull, whichever he chooses. But the amount of space in here is extremely, extremely limited. So I don't really have the choice of building a jacket that comes up over this whole area. Also, it would get really, really complex. All right, jet ski fans, these exhaust manifolds are almost finished. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video half as much as I enjoyed working on these parts. 
It'd be great if in the next video we can get these completely finished so we can ship them out to Josh and get a look at them installed on that beast. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.